Hi, I'm Ron Pars from parpools.com, and today I want to talk to you about shocking your pool. Shocking your pool is probably, unfortunately, a very neglected part of pool care. Most people don't believe that they need to shock the pool on a regular basis, and, and I just want to go over some of the reasons why it is so necessary. First of all, we need to do a very quick chemistry lesson, so that it will hopefully make you, help you to understand. This is what a, a typical chlorine molecule looks like. There are two chlorine uh, atoms, and they're, they're joined together, and this goes around the pool, and chlorine is, a, is just a very good um, sanitizer, it's a good oxidizer, it's great at controlling bacteria and algae. But the problem comes when there is waste in the pool, and the waste can be either from our skins, our sweat, makeup, body lotions, rain, uh, pollen from trees, algae that just that blows in, all of those sources, all of those are going to add waste into the pool which are going to cause you to have problems. And some of the problems that, that you're going to have are you're going to eventually have some cloudy water, you'll have smelly water, you'll have water that burns the eyes. Now, the, the, the chlorine odor and the, and the eye burning is not because of too much chlorine, but it is because of too little chlorine. And I need to explain that to you. This is good chlorine. The problem comes when, when we have some of those other problems around the pool, and uh, their waste product happens to be nitrogen. When you get nitrogen in the water, and it combines with the hydrogen that's in the water, you get ammonia. And they love each other. And it's this bond that's called a chloramine which causes the odor. It can get worse where you can have dichloramines. And if you really want to have things be really bad, we can do a trichloramine, which, which is tear gas. We don't want either of these two. One thing to keep in mind is that most municipal water authorities these days are using chloramines to treat drinking water. Chloramines are, are decent uh, bacteria fighters, but we don't want them in the pool. And unfortunately, if you're on city water or some, uh, some type of water system as opposed to a well, you will automatically be putting chloramines into your pool. And what we want to do when we shock the pool is to break the chemical bond so that you have free available chlorine and not combined chlorine. That's what we are attaining. And, and, we, can, and we can get that by shocking the pool well when you open up the pool in the springtime, but also making sure that you shock the pool every one to two weeks depending on usage, depending on weather. That if you do that, you can eliminate a whole bunch of problems and you prevent the, and you prevent the problem. One thing to keep in mind is that when you read the dosage on a on a, uh, a chlorine shock bag, the dosage that they are giving you is not in treating a problem. That is for normal usage. So if your water is crystal clear, then you should use that label instruction and follow that label instruction for that shocking purpose. If your water's cloudy, you will automatically need double to triple, if not more. So let's kind of talk about the three kinds of shocking. First of all, there is regular shocking. Regular shocking, as I said, is when the pool looks, it looks clear. It may have a slight tint or haze to it, and you just want to eliminate it and bring that all back to its sparkle. As we said, what we want is we want free available chlorine in the pool because that is, the, that is the chlorine that is freely able to go around and kill bacteria and kill algae. Typically, you use about one pound of a calcium hypochlorite type of, type of product, such as burnout, per 10,000 gallons. Now, the per 10,000 gallons means up to 10,000, or any part thereof. So if you have a 5,000 gallon pool, you're still gonna use one pound. If you have a 10,000 gallon pool that gets used a lot, my recommendation to you would be to use two bags because with all of the use, you're just putting a, a giant strain on the pool. 
If you have an 11,000 gallon pool, by all means use two. You can't overshock the pool. The next problem, the next type of shocking that we want to deal with is called breakpoint chlorination. And breakpoint chlorination is when you begin to have this ongoing problem where you cannot break up the amount of chloramines that are in the pool. And your pool may have some of these floating around, and it may have a whole bunch of these floating around. And what we want to do is we want to eliminate all of the nitrogen. We want to eliminate all the waste. Normally, when you're reaching, when you're trying to reach breakpoint chlorination, you want to find out what the difference is between the total amount of chlorine in the water and what the free and available chlorine is in the water. After you've determined that, then you can properly add the correct amount of shock to reach that breakpoint chlorination. So, for, for example, let's say that you had uh, 2.0 part per million of total chlorine. And you had, when you did your test, then you found that you had one part per million of free available chlorine. That's a difference of one part per million. In order to break that bond, you need to bring the chlorine level up 10 times in order to break that bond. If the total, if the total chlorine level was at, let's say, three part per million and you had one, you would be at, you would need to break up 20 part per million. So that's what is necessary. And when you're doing breakpoint chlorination, you do it all or you don't do it at all. You have to accomplish the breakpoint all in one shot. It's kind of like trying to jump the Grand Canyon. You have one chance to do it. You cannot hop and skip over the Grand Canyon. It all has to be done once. And whether you miss by two feet, half mile, or one inch, you still miss. And that is the importance of breakpoint chlorination. The third type of shocking that we want to address is shocking that is trying to cure a chlorine demand. Chlorine demands are becoming more and more prevalent. We see more and more of them every year. And the fact of the matter is we can treat them plus we can also prevent them. What happens when you have a chlorine demand is that you are putting chlorine into the pool, you are shocking the pool by using quite a bit of chlorine, but it is not breaking it down. And so you add more and more and more and more and more, and you're still not able to maintain a, a, a chlorine residual. In a, such, in a situation such as that, our recommendation is have a chlorine demand test done. We are able to do that for you. Um, no matter where you live in the United States, get us a sample, we're happy to do that. The good thing about finding out what the actual chlorine demand is, is that when you have a chlorine demand and you know what the exact number is, you can go in and treat it. If you do not treat it, you will actually make the chlorine demand worse. For example, last year we had a customer that uh, at one, they had a very large pool and they thought by shocking the pool with about 15 pounds of, of shock, it was going to take care of that problem. In actuality, the problem was made worse. And when we did a chlorine demand test, we found out that the pool needed 27 pounds of chlorine to break that demand. The good news for that customer was, as soon as the chlorine demand was broken, it was done, taken care of, the water went back to being crystal clear, and they were able to maintain chlorine for the rest of the summer. And that's why it's necessary to shock the pool every week, shock it when you are closing it, shock it when you uh, are opening it, and shock it well. A couple of things just to remember. When you are shocking the pool, if you, if you are using a solar blanket or any type of uh, automatic cover, remove the blanket or the cover from the pool. If you shock the pool and leave the blanket on, you will trap everything that you are trying to gas off from escaping. And instead, it will hit the bottom of the cover and then come right back down into the water and it will reform as chloramines. So always remove the solar blanket or your automatic cover. Second thing to keep in mind, like I said before, you cannot overshock your pool. 
So if you're shocking it every two weeks, go. that is fine. Don't worry about that. In fact, what we'd recommend to you is that if you know that you're going to have, for example, if you know you're going to have a party, shock the pool the night before the party and then shock it immediately after the party. That way you can maintain a good solid chlorine level. A couple of other products to keep in mind. Shocking is not always done with, with chlorine. If you're using pristine blue, you can use pristine power which is a monoprosulfate shock. Monoprosulfate shocks are good in helping to break this up, but you always want to have some type of chlorine residual. And for that reason, Pristine Extra does a great job, and our recommendation is once a month to shock it using Pristine Extra. If you're using a Baguanide product, such as uh, Soft Swim or Bacrosil, make sure that you are shocking the pool about every three weeks. One of the problems with a Baguanide pool is that because the water typically stays pretty good for a longer period of time, most customers, when they're supposed to shock the pool, take a look at the water and say, it still looks good, I don't have to shock it. And, and they will forego that for a week. And in that week's time, there's a lot of extra usage or there's rain. And within, within a, a very short period of time, the water becomes cloudy and it becomes unmanageable. So you always want to shock the pool. Those are the uh, questions and answers of why to shock the pool. If you have any questions, please email us at techhelp at parpools.com or you can also visit us at parpools.com forward slash pool care for more information and useful brochures. Thanks. Enjoy the pool.